welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, well, today we're going to take a look at a puzzle that Charles has sent us on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter feed, for those of you who don't follow us, is at Cryptic Cracking. Um, so do take a trip over there if Twitter's your thing. Um, now if you want to try this puzzle um, before you watch me solve it, then just look in the description of the video on YouTube and you should see a link that takes you to our software. Um, we're quite proud of it. It's just actually had a revamp um, last 24 hours or so, so there's a few new features there now. Uh, some of the things you've been asking for, so we've, we've worked on the um, some of the issues that were coming up on Safari and on mo certain mobile devices. And we've also added a timer in there, there's a check button. Ah, it's all going on. Um, now, Charles suggests this puzzle uh, uses a few techniques we've he's learned from the channel actually, um, and it sounds from what he says like it comes up to an interesting finish so that's the reason I, I've decided to try it because um, we haven't studied the technique he refers to in the finish for quite a while um, so without further ado let's have a look now this has got to be a nine because of these two nines here well that's a nine fours look that's going to be a four therefore this is a four because of the four in the bottom row pencil mark fours like that. As usual, if I pencil mark fours in corners, that means I'm looking at three by three boxes regarding that notation. I'm saying that the number can only go in two positions within its three by three box. If you see me pencil mark numbers in the center of squares, you know, like that, what I'm saying there is that looking at the cell itself, not the three by three box, looking at the cell, I'm listing the numbers that can go in the cell. Um, so an important distinction and something that I use all the time when I'm solving on paper. Now, just notice we've got 1 and 5 here, so that means there's a 1 and 5 in those two squares, and that means there's a 1 and a 5 in these two squares too. There's a 5 there, so we actually resolve that. That's got to be a 5, that must be a 1. Let's mark some 1s on the left. And now these two squares must be three and six, so let's, oops, not two and six, three and six. So can we do anything with that? Well, we can pencil mark threes there, and we can pencil mark sixes there. And we can fill in a seven at the bottom. We need, need two and eight into the empty positions here, and we don't know much about two and eights in column seven and column nine. Um, 1, 3, 1, 3, look, they interact beautifully on this block. So there's a 1, 3 pair there, which means there's a 1, 3 pair here. And you need to get quick at this because, look, this 1, 3, rule out 1 and 3 from those two squares, which may sound obvious, but that means that's very important in terms of row 1, that we can immediately therefore do that. Um, and we need 5 and a 6 into the... Ah, and there's a 6 there. So these two squares now have to be 5 and 6. This 6 here means we can resolve the order. And therefore, that's a 6. And therefore, that's a 5. Because, look, 5 rules out 5 from those squares. Therefore, this is a 5. Um, let's just check this, this block now. We need 2, 7, and 9. Uh, well, I can put two into one of those two positions. Ah, and let's look. These squares here must have a seven in them. Must be a seven in one of those. And in fact, they must have a two as well. Uh, messing up my notation here. Let's let's do it the other way. That's going to make it clear, I think. So two, seven, eight. 278828. So this square obviously now can't be a 2 or a 7, and we haven't put a 9 in the block. So that's a 9, that's a 2, that's a 7. 7s get pencil mark there. Um, 999. Nine, nine. So 9s into one of those two squares. This square is given because it must be a 2 just to complete the column look. Oh, hang on. 
column 7, look at this. We've effectively got six digits because of this 3, 6 here. So we need to place 2, 4, and 8. And there are 4's pencil mark there. So that square is a 2 or an 8. And that gives us a 2, 8 pair in row 9. Where I still need to place 1, 3, 5, and 6. And look, 1, 3, 5. So this square is a 6. Mm. And therefore, this is a 2 or an 8. 6, 6, no, that's 6 over here. And 1, 3, and there's a, ah, hang on, there's loads going on now. Because this 5, look, this square can only be a 1 or a 3. Now that marries up with the 1 and the 3 at the top. So there's a 1, 3 pair in column 2. And this square must be a 5. Let's actually put that in. There must be a 5 in one of those two squares. A 9. Ah, hang on. What's going on here with 9s and 8s? We've got 8s here and 8 here. So there's an 8 in one of those two squares and 9s have exactly the same restrictions. So there's an 8 9 pair here. Um, now, I'm losing track a bit here, but we still need a 6 in this block. 6 can go in any of these three squares, I think. Um, I feel like I'm missing something there, but I'm not, I can't quite work out what it is. So let's go back to the rest of the puzzle. Now these, we've got two eight here, so this is ah, so we've got two, four, and eight into these two squares, but look, two and eight there. So that square, in fact, is a naked single. Oh, that must be a four. This must be a two or eight. There's loads of two eight pairs everywhere. Two eight. have a look at row 6. We need to place 2, 4, 6 and 8 and this square sees a 2, 4 and an 8 so that square is a 6. Okay and we need 2, 4 and 8 into the rest of the row so that's a 2, 4, that's a 4, 8 and this is a 2, 8 again. I don't know how many times we've seen 2, 8 but it's pretty ubiquitous. So this must be 3 and 7 now and we haven't put a 7 into this 3x3 three three blocklet. Let's put it like that just to make it a bit clearer. Um, like that. So 3 and 7 here. I'm just going to check row 4. So we need 1, 3, 7 and 9. 1, 3, 7. That square I think has to be a 9. I think that's right. I don't see why it wouldn't be unless I've messed up my calculation. So this is a 4-8. Sorry, I need to do it like that. Ah, now look at look at row 4. We need to place 1, 3 and 7. And that's very interesting because of this square all of a sudden. Because this square is impacted by this 1, 3 pair that we found in column 2. So this can't I could have just used the pencil marks to unwind that, but now this can't be a 3 either. That's going to be a 7, 3, 7, like that. Um, still nothing about... I guess... I guess I can pencil mark 3s into those two squares because of the 1, 3 pairing in the, in the column. I'm going to check column 3 now as well. You can see that the lack of information over on in these three columns makes it quite difficult to make quick progress, at least for me. Uh, 3, 7, 8, and 9. So this seems to be a 3 or a 9, this square here, because it sees a 7 and an 8. Ah, now this square, on the other hand, is a 7 or an 8, because this sees a 3 and a 9. And this square can be 3, 7, or 8. Let's put that so mark that in just for the sake of good order. Still don't know anything about the sixes. 
I'm going to check column two, bearing in mind we've got this one three pair. Um, so the other numbers we need are two, four, six, eight, and nine. Wow. Oh, hang on, I, seven. I should have used it before. That's why. It's because this seven is impacting on pencil marks I've placed here that would allow me to go seven, five like that. That's going to unwind everything over on this side. Look. Therefore, this is a six. Finally, I get this six placed. Six, six, and this six up here. And this is a six. And can we go further? I'm just looking at ones here because this one here and this one here mean there's a one in one of these two squares and therefore this can't be a one. That's a three and that's a one. Therefore this is a one. One, three like that. Oops. This must be a three now because this three is preventing this square from being a three. So we need two, seven, eight to complete row eight and we have a seven here. So this is a two or eight. And yet again, another square that is a 2 or an 8. So this one is a 7. Therefore, this is not a 7. So another 2 8 pair. Um, feels like this 3 is important. Yeah, that's going to give us a 9, which means we get 9, 8, 7 here. Okay, we need two, three, and four into these squares, and therefore this is the only place a three can go. This must be a two or a four. Now that looks like I can't resolve it, surprisingly, and this must be a two or a four, which I can't resolve. Uh, now, I've now spotted where Charles was going with this. Let's look at this square. Uh, we're going to be able to write in the value of this square. Um, but the options, in theory at least, are 2, 4 and 8. So let's put those in and work out what's going on. So the issue is we have something here called the bug, the by-value universal grave. Now this occurs where you can place uh, where every one of the remaining cells that are un unfilled has two options, except for one cell. So if we look at this grid here, this cell has three options, everything else has two options. Now, we've looked at uniqueness before, um, but this bug principle is sort of a very extreme version of uniqueness, because we have to make sure that we don't pick options for this cell that result in more than one solution. Now you might say, well, how can we worry about more than one solution? Well, let me look at this for a moment. If I remove the possibility of two here, and let's say that this was a four or an eight, let's say that this was the pattern we were presented with. The issue, I shall try and explain it clearly. It might, might mean we have to run through an example. But if we look along this row, there are two positions for fours, two positions for eights, and two positions for twos. Similarly for column two, you can see two positions for twos, two positions for fours, two positions for eights. Um, and this pattern sort of repeats around the grid. So let's just say, say for the sake of example, we've, we've hypothesized a four in this square. Now I'm going to be able to use my pencil marks here um, for a different purpose. I'm, because I've central pencil marked in everything, I'm now going to present corner pencil marks to indicate what happens if this square could only be a 4 or an 8 and we hypothesized it was a 4. Now watch. 4 here. So this is going to be 2. This is going to be 4. This is going to be 2. This is going to have to be 8. 4. 8. Now this was an 8, so we go 2. 8. 2. 8. 2. This is going to be an 8. And has every square now got a pencil mark in the corner? I think so. OK. So now can you see why there's an issue? Because if, on the other hand, starting here, I just decided to select 8 instead, 
every single cell that I've just put a corner pencil mark into changes to its other alternative. In other words, this puzzle has two solutions. There is no way from the internal logic of the puzzle to disambiguate the version where I put a 4 in this square from the version where I put an 8 in this square. Um, and if you just work it through in your mind, it, you should be able to see that that is the case. So what does all this mean? Well, that was all a very, very long-winded way of saying when we come back to this square and the possibilities of 2, 4 and 8, actually this square must contain a 2. That, if you look at it, that gives us three squares that can contain a 2 in this row and this column. And all of a sudden, this sort of uniqueness point that I've just mentioned breaks. Watch. When I put the 2 into this square, now we start to get some differences. This square now is an 8, 2, 8, 2, now it's 8, 4, and this will be 8, 2, and 8 like that. Let's check. Looks good to me, is the message, and that is an example of the bug. Now there are some very exotic situations where bugs don't work, so you do, when you find one, you need to check the square in question and check that the rows, columns, and the box are all restricted in the manner that I just mentioned. And where where you could select two of the three options such that you create the pattern where there are two choices in each of those three sort of sub areas, rows, columns and boxes, you're good to go. You can just enter in the other number and the puzzle will unwind like this. That's assuming of course you're working on a good Sudoku that does have a unique solution. So something a bit different, we haven't done a bug for a while but I thought it was a good chance. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this puzzle. Thank you Charles for sending it in and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.